All right, friends, this is the right log weight type, the answer. So just a few days back, I recorded another video which is available on our channel, right log weight type, the question, where I showed a scenario where the right log weight type was being triggered. And sometimes, as I told in the video, we think that so many weight counts and weight time is happening on right log weight type because it could be an IO problem, but it's not an IO problem. There's something else that we need to understand about the internals of SQL Server. So that was the question. A lot of comments on that video. And here is the answer. Why things happen the way they happen. And if you're watching this video and if you're, you have not watched the previous one, no worries. I'm going to demonstrate what I did there again here so that you don't have to go back to that video. You can watch the question and the answer all in this video. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to use AdventureWorks 2016. Here is the scenario. We have a table here, test one with a couple of attributes. Let's go and create the test table. We are going to clear off the weight stats using the command dbcc sql perf. Let's go and reset everything back to zero. And if we go and select from sysdmos weight stats where weight type is right log, of course, you're going to see all the numbers as zero. I'm going to take this. Uh, not this one. I am going to take these two in a new window. Just a moment, because while inserts are going on, I will show you the count, etc. So let's go back. Okay, what we did was we have set everything back to zero. Now we are going to insert some records in this table. Uh, let's not do 50,000 because that might take some time. Let's do 25,000 records. Now watch this query here. It's a uh, it's a loop. We are inserting about 25,000 records. Let's put this less than equal to, to be fair. Okay. And what you can see is the while loop, of course, has the begin end statement and you have this insert command. Now there is no explicit transaction. There is an implicit transaction here with each insert statement, which means each insert statement is acting as a begin tran, insert and then commit tran. This is what is happening in an implicit transaction. Now let's go and run this loop. Let's go and execute this. Okay, this is going on and if we go back to the other window and this is why I put this in the other window, let's look at how many records are being inserted. Okay, this is taking a bit of time. Let's stop this. Let's look at write log weight stats. Okay, now if you see, look at the task count and the wait time in milliseconds. If you keep an eye on these two attributes, you will see as the records get inserted, you will see high wait time and high waiting task count for the right log wait type. Now, now mind you, there is no IO problem. This is what I showed in the other video, right? Okay, so the query is run. Let's go and execute this and you will see 25,000 records have been inserted. And for these 25,000 record insertion, before we started the insert loop, the right log weight stats were all zero, but now you will see approximately 25,000 waiting task count and similar wait time. If you were doing this 50,000 and or a million or so, this would be high wait time. And the conclusion we sometimes look for is there may be a, an issue with IO or the log file is on slow disks. Uh, the physical disk is slow, the IO subsystem is slow or misconfigured, etc, etc. But really, there is no issue with the IO. Now, let's go back to the query here. And let's, um, okay, let's drop the table. And let's create this again. We are going to reset the statements back again. And do, do you see how much time that query took? Again, I showed that in the other video and here also, this entire execution took about 20 seconds or so to complete. Now let's go and reset the wait stats back to zero, all zero. We run the same loop again. Let me pull this a little down. We run the same loop again, but this time you have a begin try here and then you have a commit try here which means this insert statement is now encapsulated inside an explicit transaction. Not only this insert statement, in fact, the entire loop, the entire loop is put into a, an explicit transaction, which means 
this entire thing is going to act as a batch. 25,000 record insertion is going to be a single atomic transaction, which means there's only going to be one commit here. Unlike the previous case where each insert statement was being atomic here. Okay, this is the catch. Now let's go and run this and execute. I won't even get time to go back to the other query window and show you some metrics because this is just going to run very quickly in less than a second. Let's go and execute this. Ah, just taking a bit of time there. Oh, now it's done. So it took about two seconds there. Let's go and verify some numbers. Did we get 25,000 records? Oh, I did 50,000 in this one. Okay, I did the double of it. That is interesting. Let's drop the table again. Why not do this again? You got to be fair, right? So let's put this as uh, 25 and that's why I said it will take less than a second or so. Okay, let's do this again. 25,000 records should be a second. Let's go and insert invalid object. Really? I didn't create the table. Okay, let's create the table. Let's create the table. Let's clear the statistics once more. Let's look at the numbers. They're all set back to zero. Live demos friends. Sometimes we goof up. Okay, let's go and start this again. Now, about a second, let's, that's what it should be. There you go, completed. Because this was a single atomic transaction. How many records did we get into the table? We got 25,000 records. What about our write log numbers? This is the crux. Okay, waiting task count just one and absolutely no wait time on the write log wait time. Now, the reason why I recorded this, this video and I, and I mentioned this in the previous one uh, is there was a discussion with one of our customers where I was doing some performance tuning work and this thing came up, write log wait type came up in their typical top 10 wait types in their environment and write log was showing very high. And of course, the moment you see write log, it is categorized under wait types related to IO. And the moment it is put under wait types related to IO and then the numbers are high, DBAs, developers, they all start scrambling around IO subsystems, start looking at average disk, read per second, write per second, transfers per second, all perform counters related to IO. They will start looking at all the attributes in DIM exec query stats, you know, expensive, um, you know, DML statements that are causing a lot of IO, etc, etc. Now, with this demo, what I am trying to prove is there is absolutely no problem with the IO. There is a reason why you have write log going very high for the previous loop here for the previous insert statement is because this is how the internal log architecture of SQL Server works. So hear me out, just two minutes of internals knowledge here. Whenever you are doing a DML operation like you're doing an insert statement or an update or delete, SQL Server will not write to the write log uh, to the log file immediately upon the completion of the transaction. So you have the log file, the transaction log file, which you are supposed to place on a fast storage, right? You you take one of your fastest drives and you put the log files there. That's one of the recommended best practices, and rightly so. So SQL Server is not going to write to the log file directly. It will first write the log information in what we call as the log cache or the log buffer, which is an in-memory structure. And once a while from that in-memory structure, the log buffer, the log cache, the log records are going to be flushed out to your lo log file, which is placed on the disk. Now the write log wait type, the write log wait type starts getting registered, you know, or starts getting triggered when the process of flushing out the log buffer begins, which means the process of writing the log records from the log buffer to the log file begins. That is where write log will get triggered. Okay, that's the a very um, high level overview of when the write log wait type triggers and how the log architecture works. So this is the transfer of data from the in-memory structure log buffer to the physical file on the disk. Now, of course, if the disk is slow, there may be high wait time for the write log, etc, etc. That's a different discussion. But in our case, the disks are all great. This is all on SSD. Yet you see high wait time in the first loop, but absolutely nothing in the second. Because when does that event happen, which is writing the log buffer to the 
log file, the log records. When does that happen? So let's go back to the first loop. Okay, let's do this. In the first loop, there is no explicit transaction. Each insert statement is an implicit transaction. So the triggering event here is the completion of the transaction. SQL Server, the internal log architecture, how it works, the moment a transaction is complete, it's committed, SQL Server is going to transfer the log records from the log buffer to the log file. So in this case, it happens 25,000 times. It happens 25,000 times and that's exactly why you will see the weight count for write log about 25,000 and that's the about of 25,000 millisecond wait time also. But when you put this entire 25,000 record insertion in an explicit transaction, making this as an atomic unit, it happens only once. It happens only once. So that's the difference between the first loop and the second loop. And that is the, re the reason why you will see high write log wait time and waiting task count um, in the implicit transaction versus explicit transaction. There are other events also that will trigger the transfer of log records from the log buffer to the log file. Again, of course, if the log buffer is full, it's an in-memory structure. So the moment it's full, it will start transferring the data out. But transactional architecture is something that you got to be aware of. So the learning from this tutorial, from this video is when you see write log wait time going very high, do not panic, do not start suspecting the IO. Of course, have a look at the IO, you're constantly monitoring IO performance, but look at such transactions, such workloads that are triggering high write log wait time. It, got, it, it might be to do something with this. This is exactly what we figured out with our customer and then we showed them how things work. And of course, the performance aspect of it, which is, each insert statement, when it becomes an implicit transaction, of course, there is a delay in that commit and transferring of the log records, writing to the log file. That's why it takes about 20 to 25 seconds. But when the entire insertion becomes a single atomic unit, then of course, it runs in less than a second, very quick. But then it depends on the business. Transactional architecture is not something that you are going to define. It might be a business requirement that each insert statement has to be treated differently and cannot be part of a batch process. That is totally a call that the application or the business architecture will take. But then the idea here is now you know the internals of how write log works. And when you see these high numbers flying around, you got to investigate a little more intelligently because now you know the internals of write log. All right, friends, hope this demo was useful and hope you learned something new about write log wait type. I will see you soon in another video. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, eBooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.